Hello, everyone. I'm going to talk to you about the Quick App Initiative. It's obviously something that uh, we've been running within OW2 and uh, give you some insights to that. Okay, so as my kind uh, introducer said, you guys already know who I am, mostly. Uh, I run my own uh, open source consultancy company, Open Up. So if you have questions around governance, community, all of that kind of great stuff, come talk to me. I'm also president of OW2, and I chair the, OW, the OW2 Quick App Initiative. So I have several hats that I have on my head today. So what is the OW2 Quick App Initiative? It's an open industry uh, forum to explore and discuss and promote the idea of Quick Apps and the related technologies and the standards that support Quick Apps. Um, why are we talking about quick apps? So quick apps, what are they really? Um, so they started a number of years ago, or the idea of quick apps started a number of year, years ago uh, with, uh, the, with WeChat and its mini programs. Now WeChat is in China. Mini programs are these amazing things that you launch, you get instant access to doing stuff, and you stay within a kind of a sandboxed browser or application uh, environment. So it's a very interesting dynamic. It's very different to what we can use traditionally in the West when we have separate apps that we're downloading uh, from an app store. Um, and it's much more fluid and it's absolutely taken off everywhere. And a, uh, a large number of uh, OEMs in China, so Xiaomi, Lenovo, uh, Huawei um, and others, Oppo, um, came together to create the Quick App Alliance and look at how they could standardize this technology so that quick apps that were running as mini programs or quick apps or mini apps in one, uh, from one um, uh, OEM device could work on other OEM devices. So the real kind of selling point here is the notion of instant user gratification. So what do I mean by that? Is traditionally when you uh, go to uh, uh, when when you have your mobile device, you want to use an application. What you'll do is you'll go to an app store. You will hunt for that application. You will download it. You might download several, in fact, because you don't know quite what you want. And then once that download has finished, you'll start to try out the applications, and you'll use the one that you like the best. Now the applications that you haven't tried because you already you've already fell on the right application, you'll leave on your phone, you won't even have tried them. Um, and maybe the application that you do use, uh, you'll use it once or twice and never again. So it's not very instant and it's not very sustainable in terms of device storage for your phones either. So instant apps really uh, get, sorry, mini apps, uh, quick apps really get around this notion, whereas you're launching the applications instantly they come to your phone, you use them, they go. Now, Apple talked about this to some extent a little bit in their WWDC uh, when they said Safari will be supporting web apps uh, in its next iteration. Um, and it's, it's a very similar idea. And we'll get onto that. Okay, so um, why the OW2 initiative? So obviously, OW2 is Europe's premier fantastic open source organization. I'm not biased at all. <laughs> um, so no, your, uh, OW2 is one of Europe's uh, historical open source organizations. So it's a fantastic place. They also have uh, an interesting or a, a fairly uh, business friendly uh, approach to IP and pol uh, naming policies. So what you tend to find is when you uh, bring a project to OW2, uh, they're not going to impose a name on that project. If you'll go to other um, um, organizations, they'll tend to say this is now organization name XYZ project name. So it, there's a slightly different naming policy, it's a bit more e easy. And one of the biggest things was for us was we could create an initiative as a forum to bring together people to discuss and to think of how to move this concept forward without having to do initial code drops, which is something you can't do in a lot of other uh, organizations. The idea of the initiative itself was fourfold. 
to raise awareness around mini apps, quick apps, the light app dynamic, to build a commons of knowledge and to share experiences between the different participants and between the participants and the consumers, collaborate on pro code projects or templates and experimentations, and to feed into the standardization process. Obviously standards, and I think uh, Simon, I don't know if you have a talk on this today, but Simon talks a lot about standards. Um, the standards tend to be uh, set up and uh, matured through organizations uh, that are fairly large, generally speaking. And the process is not always accessible to, let's say, the grassroots developers. So we thought the QuickApp initiative would be a nice way of bringing together grassroots developers, people who are really using mini, mini apps, quick apps, really out there on the ground experimenting to say, well, use these things. Tell us what the shortfalls are. Tell us what the great things are. Tell us what the missing parts are and feed that up into the standardization process. And of course, we wanted to, uh, well, just have a general good discussion about all of those things. Okay, there's a timeline here. You're not going to be able to, oh yeah, you can read it when it's super large. Um, so there's a timeline of what we've achieved in the last two years, or what we've done in the last two years, I should say. So the launch was two years ago in OW2Con. Uh, so that was, that was uh, obviously a big event for us. And we have progressively moved forward with uh, setting up registration process, a community portal, bringing in uh, editorials, doing lots of talks at conferences and that kind of stuff. I'll talk about some of the things in the purple color at the bottom in a second. Okay, so what worked well? When you speak about quick apps and mini apps to people, and when we show them the demonstrations that we have, every single person that I've spoken to said, that's an absolutely fantastic idea. God, I'm so bored of going to the traditional app store and having to download stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. I'd love to be able to just instantly use an app and then have it disappear and not clutter up my phone. So they really like the idea. People like this idea. And that's borne out by the numbers of people using it on a daily basis in Asia. So obviously, China is one of the biggest markets, but not only. And that's, oh, that's over, I believe the, the, the figure is floating around. It was one billion active daily users of this type of technology. So these are not small numbers. It's just that in, in Europe and the West, we don't really know this type of approach to applications. So that was really positive, positive feedback. The next positive one was actually the community spirit, which is quite a strange because you're also going to see it's also an, a, a negative as well. Um, so the community spirit was really cool. Uh, the people that came on board, they're like, they were really act active, they were very motivated, they helped write editorials. If you go to the portal of the Quick App Initiative, you'll see some fantastic editorials written by some gaming companies or others who have spoken about the potential for this. And it's, it's really nice to see that. One of the things I think I'm probably most happy about to see was the academic challenges. So we partnered with Talanto. Talanto is an organization in Spain, based in Spain who organize uh, industry academia challenges. And we partnered with them with uh, a couple of, I'm going to say the condition of, when we do our challenges, the results must be uh, made available, Creative Commons, open source, we want to make them public. And that was, uh, I, I'm going to say that, and th these are still going on, and that was a, that was a big draw. So we've had some, uh, some really nice interactions with universities. Very recently, we, uh, we worked with LUT University in Finland, and also with uh, University College Cork in Ireland on exploring the use cases and business cases for mini apps. Because obviously one thing is to say, well, I, I've got this really cool technology. The other thing is to say, well, this is an example of how you could use it. The students in LUT actually were so excited about the technology once they started looking at it, they were like, can we take our ideas after the challenge and actually go make a business? I'm like, yeah, go for it. I mean, we will publish your papers on the portal as Creative Commons. So if you want to go, go, go run with that, go for it. 
good luck to you guys. So they have some really nice ideas and they will go up on the portal uh, shortly. We've received them, I just haven't pu had the time to publish them yet. The other one was SHH, S HC, excuse me, at Spring Hill College. Uh, they did a challenge where they took the Heritage Inn Demonstrator app and they use, worked with that with their high school students and they developed some implementations of that open source code and they used it as part of their curriculum within a computer science and business course. And again, they were really happy with that. They then went on to talk about their experiences at an education uh, event organized by the University of Southern Alabama or the University of Alabama, I can't remember which. So that was really, really positive. Heritage Inn, I've mentioned that a, a couple of seconds, I'm gonna hugely overrun. Um, is an open source demonstrator app that allows you pro to produce a progressive web app or a mini app, depending on uh, how the user then interacts with it. It's really interesting, it's on GitHub, it's an open source license, you can go play with it, you can uh, download it as a, well not download it, you can uh, copy as a template and then create your own implementation and go have some fun. It's quite basic, but it's quite interesting. Oh. Okay, so what challenges did we face? So the big, the, the kind of the, the three big challenges were coding together. Uh, that probably doesn't surprise you because we started this off as an industry forum of discussion, right? So actually getting people to come along and do some coding, that was a kind of a challenge. Um, so we released the Heritage in demo application. We thought. That's great, we'll use that. We can show people how these things work and maybe some of the community or the wider community will come in and add bits on, add fact functionality and that kind of stuff. Well, that, that, that hasn't really happened. Community energy. So I said the community is one of the positive things. Yes, the community was great, but keeping the energy of the community, now that's not so easy thing to do. Um, so those of you that work in DevRel have probably experienced this. It's kind of a slog, right? Especially if you're not having the results that are touching the bottom line of the company behind the, the community, or the companies, I should say. And then, of course, the other challenge is that MiniApp, so QuickApp is an implementation of MiniApp. MiniApp is a broad, much broader uh, set of standard or technology that's being matured within the W3C. And these standards are not yet finalized. So, of course, that's also a challenge. So, the lessons that I'm going to take away from this and which I, I'll share with you are the following. When you're setting up your new project for open source, or you've got your project and you, you say, I'm gonna make this open source, make sure you know what your goals are, what you know what you, have a clear vision of what you want to achieve by making your project open source. I mean, it sounds obvious, right? But, you know, I worked with Orange before and you, you wouldn't believe the number of projects that come along and say, we'll make this open source. Why will you make it open source? Uh, we don't know, <laughs> but we're going to. Um, and that's something you come across, right? So think about what your goals are. Think about what you want to achieve and why you're doing this. And make sure you have the resources available to do it. So another thing, I mean, if you work in big organizations, you know, you might have a project. Okay, we're going to make this open source. It's really cool. We're going to get some community collaboration. We're going to make things better. And then the project team have to move on to their next projects, and there's no one really around to kind of support what's going on. So think about, think about your goals, make sure you've got the resource in. All hands on deck. Participants need to be active, that's pretty clear, right? Uh, but someone has to kickstart the efforts. And I think this is uh, probably less of a message for people in the audience, but definitely a message for the wider community is, you know, when you're starting out on an open source project, you have to remember that you're bootstrapping that project. Don't expect the community to come in straight away and be super active with you. It, it doesn't happen. Now, the last couple of points here, I think are probably the most critical or the most open to question. The first one is value. What value are you delivering with your project and how can you ensure that your community 
sees the value and engages with you in a valuable way. I've put cost equals value. So communities generally are free, right? You can join the community. Well, the Quick App Initiative is free. You can join. You don't even have to be a member of OW2. But because there's no cost, there's also no commitment. So it becomes a very voluntary thing. And I think this is a real question that you know projects and organizations need to ask. I know for the OW2 conference, it's one of the things is, should there be a cost to the conference? Because lots of people sign up, but they don't all turn up because they haven't put any money on the table. They don't have a stake in the game. So I think there's a real question there about how you ensure that people, you want things to be as open as possible, but you also want to ensure that people are engaged actively within what you're doing. And for me, this comes down to the next point, which is the motivators. You have to understand the motivations behind your community. Are they intrinsic, extrinsic? What are they trying to do when they join? Okay, so are they trying to, for example, just increase their bottom line and if it doesn't happen within the first three months, well, they're going to disappear. So think about why people are joining and what value you're going to offer to them. Because a community is a two-way partnership. The people who lead the community and the people that consume or take part in the community, everyone has to come away winning. And of course, as I say, it's hard work. It's an uphill battle. Generally speaking, your open source project will not be directly generating revenue, at least at the beginning. So getting, getting past that hurdle with your management, um, reporting on that in KPIs. I think there was a discussion yesterday about how do you report on this? What KPIs do you follow? Um, I might have been with Mercedes, I can't remember. Uh, you know, this is a question because, yeah, ha can you prove that you're saving money? Can you prove that you're generating money? Is generating money what your company is really looking for? Or is it saving money? Or is it something else? So think again about the motivators and all of that. So those are the lessons I'm taking away after two years of the uphill struggle. Um, and I've run out of time, but this is the final slide. So what we're going to do moving forward, because personally, I think mini apps, quick apps, light application frameworks, I think these are a significant way forward for a lot of what we do and a lot of interactions that we do with our mobile devices, especially when we think about how the world is becoming more mobile oriented, how people access the internet increasingly from a mobile device rather than a desktop device, how our homes are becoming smart, our cities are becoming smart, transport is becoming smart, your interactions with the government are becoming smart, everything is starting to go around the notion of smart, connected, ubiquitous connectivity and these kind of things. And we can't just keep downloading apps the same old way. And equally, you want that experience of getting access to the function that you need now without having to go through several hoops and hurdles and all of that kind of stuff. So I think things will, I think uh, personally that mobile apps, uh, mini apps, uh, progressive web apps are a way forward. Um, we are working increasingly with the, in the initiative with the W3C and we have uh, promoted uh, the, uh, the drafting of an, uh, of an MOU between the W3C and OW2 so that these two organizations can work more closely together, not just on mini apps, but other technologies as well. So hopefully that will be signed soon. I'm coming Who knows? closer to you. It, that's, yeah. yeah, and I, 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 I'm being, no, I'm moving away. I need, I need 30 seconds more. The other thing on this slide is that the Quick App Initiative was called the Quick App Initiative because we wanted to focus on Quick Apps because it was a concrete implementation of Mini Apps. But what we start to see now is Mini Apps is a much broader technology base, much more interesting. There's a whole load of technologies that are coming into the Mini App scope that has been discussed within the W3C. We want to cover that full scope of potential. So we are changing the scope and the name of the Quick App Initiative, and it will be forever 
known, well, never say ne forever, but it will be uh, known as the MiniApp initiative. So we will cover technologies such as Quick Apps, of course, but also the new technologies such as ArcTS, RQI, Atomic Services, and there's a whole load of other technologies that are coming on board. These are programming languages and frameworks as well. Uh, so it's very exciting. Um, hopefully we'll take the lessons from the last two years, carry them forward and go strength to strength. Thank you very much.